Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. A couple of weeks ago in one of our vlogs I was showing you this pattern, I said look the cyclamens are coming up, they'll soon be flowering and indeed they are, look at this, lovely, just to see just to see a bit of colour really, it kind of gives you that hope of spring the daffodils here, the narcissi, the dwarf daffodils are coming up and we've got snowdrops coming up everywhere and they're not quite flowering here but it's a couple more days of lovely weather and those snowdrops are going to carpet the place and look fantastic, it's such a nice sign to see a little bit of the spring flowers coming through it gives you hope for a new season and a new spring and, and bit of hope for the new year for sure. Um, the weather's so variable this time of year. We've had, I've been working this week in 11 degrees, 10, 11 degrees during the day with a biting wind chill, absolutely perishing. And yet yesterday, glorious sunshine. It didn't get above freezing in the shade all day long. And yet it was almost t-shirt weather working outside. So really variable, so stop, start, stop, start for the, the, the plant life, the amphibian life, even the bird life, birds were singing away yesterday because the sun had a bit of heat and it was a lovely sunny day. And it's that time of year. Is it spring? Is it winter? Is it, it's coming. And um, thank goodness for that. A few more weeks, hopefully, it'll be really coming to life and that's the kind of time of year I want to see. <laughs> any way possible put some water in your garden because not only does it give the birds a permanent drinking source which is, which they'll come to your garden just for that even if you don't feed the birds it allows things like hedgehogs to drink and forage for invertebrates around the edge as long as you design that pond that hedgehogs can easily get it out hedgehogs are great swimmers but they can't get out of the steep slippery slopes so you've got to you've got to make sure your pond or water feature allows them in and out and of course it creates a chain, if everyone had little water or ponds in their garden, a really chain of wetland areas, if you like, in miniature, for things like our British amphibians. When raptor exotics grew bigger and bigger, we got to the point, after having a pond in a garden that I've lived with all of my entire life, I had to fill in my large garden pond and move the amphibians to suitable areas. Sadly, every spring, every this time of year, even as soon as the weather milds up in the evening, bit of wet rainy night I get common newts and great crested newts in my garden all looking for their breeding pond which is long since gone and you know there's, there's, there's issues with relocating animals but for sure I'm not leaving newts of any species roaming around in my pond when I know my neighbours don't have ponds and I know they've come back to their breeding pool that no longer exists so part of the reason we've got this uh, wildlife pond set up last year at Icarus Falkery is to encourage amphibians and it also gives me somewhere to place these guys. So what we've got here isn't a great question, it's a male smooth new. If you look at him now, people might say, oh no, that's a female smooth new. But of course, his breeding dress is only coming on because he's looking for a pool. And if you flip him over, we can see clearly he's a male smooth new and not a female. So we're gonna pop him in the edge. He's cooled down. We know there's already smooth newts here. We know there's already great crested newts here on site. Let's pop him in, wish him well. And one thing strange about newts, they return to the pond they, they, they hatched in and they return to their breeding ponds year on year. But if you take them from a pond a reasonable distance away and put them in another pond, they'll return there year on year. They won't be lost or try and find the pond they came from. So we know this will work, but it's got, you know, it's a kind of, he's got no chance of breeding where he was and he's got no pond to go to. So he's got a more 50-50 chance. Let's pop him in the edge here. wish him well see how he gets on 
sadly for him, the weather's cooled down since he was roaming my pond two nights ago, roaming my garden two nights ago. But I'm really looking forward to seeing what's in here in the spring. And one way we can find out what amphibian and newt life is in a pond is actually come over when it's dark with a bright torch and lamp them because they're active at night, much more so, and they come nearer the edge. We'll report back what newts, what species, and what's going on in this very new pond, but it'll attract some stuff. If you can get a pond in your garden, highly recommended. There's two real big things in your garden that's gonna attract wildlife. One's a big, big, mature native tree, and the other one is a pond. Now, every garden can fit some kind of pond in, and some kind of pond will provide a habitat for some kinds of animals. A tree is a handy thing to have, but most gardens, the average garden, can't support a large, native, mature tree for sure. Ponds have one. Come on in. Shut the door behind you. So this is our lodge and this is where our experienced day guests in any normal year in the whole of the history of the world come and they keep warm, they, we do our paperwork first thing in the morning for our guests and then it's a, it's a retreat if it showers, it's somewhere they can have their lunch if it's too cold to sit on our wonderful benches outside and it's, it's really the sort of the cosy area for our experienced day guests and of course our staff because if you're working here and it's bitterly bitterly cold or freezing cold wind you do get weather beaten and you know if you're gonna have a bit of lunch or a cup of tea you want to get out that sort of element and warm up so we try to make it really cozy and it's got a bit of history of the things in here and everything tells a tale um i've really noticed that the pictures aren't straight and now it's really giving me ocd but i haven't got time to straighten them for you oh goodness have a look so what are we i'm going to take you around you always need some coat hooks don't you one of our icarus full cream super brilliant jackets that keep every element off and we love them this one's here as a spare because you know what we always tell our experience day guests the kind of clothes and footwear that's advisable to wear and we still get people turn up in, in winter or on a cold, cold day in a t-shirt, seriously, or white trainers. So, lifesaver for some of our guests. Um, let's go around. So here we've got a nice boy. And this was actually from last year's Christmas party for our, our staff now and friends. You can see it's last year's and I'll show you this year's um, collection of pictures from the Christmas party. They're just here. Here they are. Because of course, we didn't have a Christmas party, did we? Because of the darn bug. So moving on, this tells a tale here actually. Fire safety, you know, there's those kind of things we have to have. This tells a tale, this wall, because this wall is devoted to Emily's artwork, Savory Chaffinch, if you're on Facebook, and she's our in-house artist really she's absolutely fantastic and she's painted all of the birds here at Icarus Falkery and then she's had prints taken now you can buy originals from her but what she does here she sells her prints at a very reasonable price and they're a great gift aren't they you've come on an experience day and your favorite bird was I don't know Pedro the burrowing owl you can take home an actual piece of artwork not just of a burying owl, but these are our actual birds. And they're so good, you can see the personalities of them. Absolutely amazing. So the tale it tells is, they've all gone. She's run out, she's got to get new prints done. So that's absolutely excellent. People love her artwork. And I really should, I'd, we'll put a link in below, but check out Savory Chaffinch. Because she does horses, she does dogs. Just an all round talent, really. Moving on, these are lovely. These two here, great grey owl, one of our tawny owls. And these were actually brought in by an elderly gentleman who came here on an experience day, loved it so much, he painted his two favourite birds and brought them in and gifted them to us. So we really like real, real art from our customers as well, fantastic. This is a fantastic image here. And this is actually from David Rampling at the North Devon Bird of Prey Centre. One of the most talented artists really in, in the world of falconry for sure. A, a, a very well known talent. Check out David Rampling art some superb stuff and here this is quite interesting. a little bit about harpy eagles because this is a a cast from a harpy eagle a south american harpy eagle the most powerful eagle in the world to give you some idea this bird here this cast was from a a museum specimen so it's actually quite uh what's the word it's not the right word but dehydrated so it's 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 
the, uh, a real harp eagle's foot is even thicker, humongously thick toes. But to give you some idea, you wouldn't want to be a sloth or a howler monkey in the Amazon rainforest with harp eagles around. So that was gifted to us by a great eagle breeder called George Musarad, absolutely fantastic gentleman who actually bred my Zeus many moons ago. We've got a little bit about barn owls, everyone loves a barn owl. We've got a lovely image sent to us when we joined Project Lugger. So that came to us to sort of promote the Lugger Falcon. This is great. This is my first goshawk. I think if I turn this over, it's something like 1994, and she was about four years old then. My first goshawk, my first proper falconry bird. I've got this image, and this was a painting someone did for me. So really nice. A lot of memories there. Hard work, very much a TH white goshawk. I didn't know anything really, and I kind of struggled through with the help of good falconers in Northampton. Lots of good memories of her. She went to the States, by the way, to the Washington Falconers Association to become part of a breeding project in the States. What have we got? Some sent in here by customers. We've got a little bit of medieval kind of artwork. What else have we got? This is great, look at this. Tom Morris from the Hawk Conservancy. He painted my eagle on an actual bird's feather many moons ago for one of my birthday presents. Look at that. A painting on a feather. Tom Carnegie and Falconry Bad. I've had this since I was 18 years old. He was the only person I knew and the only person in Northamptonshire that made any falconry equipment whatsoever. Times have changed with the internet, but still going strong. Oh, well, this is an interesting one. This shows how we clip telemetry, one of the ways we mount telemetry, onto our bird's tail feather. So we've got a golden eagle tail feather, and the telemetry, this is how we attach them in one way. This is glued on crimped onto the tail feather shaft and the telemetry transmitter without my glasses on kind of clips on like that we've got what have we got here a worn out eagle hood from john meese we've got a, a genuine mongolian eagle hood here we've got a random skull that someone brought in of a deer we've got a stuffed gray squirrel that used to live at my auntie's and uncle's house when i was a tiny boy it's amazing, it's preserved it forever. They said, do you want it for the lodge? Um, Thomas Carnihan's absolutely superb eagle there, and a couple of his artwork, which is now sadly faded in the, in the sunshine, but you can see the amazing power and speed of eagles, and a lovely one of Tom Carnihan's prints here, sadly faded. We've got a Andy Smith eagle glove. And here's interesting, we've got a bit of information, and we've got various notice boards about conservation of vultures. And we work with the Hawk Conservancy over at Andover and help them with their work they do with vultures on the ground in Africa. We sell wristbands, you buy wristbands, and you actually do some good because the money actually goes for real conservation, grassroots level. That there is a dragon's egg. Actually, it's an ostrich's egg from Africa. What else have we got? Here's an interesting picture. Oh, sorry, yes. The Lugger Falcon wristbands here. So these ones go to help vulture converse, conversation, conservation. And these ones here from Bob Dalton and his, his guys over at the Lugger Project, Project Lugger. These wristbands here, they go and help the work they're doing with the Lugger Falcon in India and Pakistan. What else we got? Some interesting eagle meat from Apocno, the biggest eagle meat in the world over on the continent. And we've got an interesting picture Thomas Carnegie took of his eagle meeting a fox. An absolute Mexican standoff of two pretty much apex predators there. Oh, Lee and Amy Collins gifted us the guy here. I forgot his name. This guy here also probably older than I am. It looks quite tasty to me, but he's not got any meat left on him, bless him. And there's some of our other interesting stuff. So Karen runs our in-house adopters for you can adopt our birds. It gives us a little bit of help financially and you get a lovely adoption pack and you get a, site, a name plaque on the bird's aviary. So this is some of the work we do with our bird adoptions in-house. I think Tom Morath here, I think he's just run out and he needs to sort of re-adopt, but we'll get on to him about that. And of course we've got some leaflets. So we've got leaflets for the Project Lugger, which you can take away for free. Dr. Bird, we've got our own leaflets which are now in need, need of updating. And some of the work we do here, that, well not we do, some of the work that Hold and Be House does and the things on offer at the house as well as the open gardens and falconry. Trip advisor, where are we? 16, 17, 18, 19. Haven't heard anything about 2020 of course. 
always one of the top, if not the top thing in Northamptonshire on TripAdvisor. I got into a finalist a little while back for this, which we, we haven't entered since, I don't think. Some of our hoods, we're going around now. Really important, please turn off lights and heaters. There's hardly any electric at this place compared to my reptile room at Raptor Exotics. My goodness, this place eats electric. Everything we've done, it's just genuine, we can't believe it. We, we thought um, Steve and Jackie with their horse field next door in the arches, they, you, they've got their stables there, and I had to have a word with Steve. I thought, I know that guy's running a cable from the Fulcrum Centre somewhere to keep those horses warm, but no, it turns out he's not, he really isn't. Um, some nice pewter badges, these were gifted by customers. I know these two were actually, these were gifted by my dad. So he found these somewhere at a, a boot sale. And of course, very important, our animal activities license, which we have to have for both businesses to work with animals in this way. And that kind of takes you around the tour. Oh, look at this, and this here looks like a bit of junk. This is actually a pull-up board that again, further uh, advertises our bird adoptions here. The bird adoption, I think they're 50 pounds. It just gives you something to take away or another gift. Maybe you, you're, you've bought experience days here for your friends and you think it's Christmas, their birthday. What little thing can I get them? They can adopt a bird as well. Anyway, more work to do. And of course, it looks great in here because Jackie, that sort of woman's touch, has made it look really nice. Who she is, talk about that. <laughs> this is, you know, you need that kind of feminine touch, that little bit of a homemaker, because you know what I'm like, look at the state of me. Scruffy urchin, I wouldn't be able to achieve such things. It's a family effort here. It's a team effort with our staff, who are fantastic and unbelievable in what they do. And the wider picture is, of course, it's a bigger team, the, the, the ripples go out, with the team at Holdenby House as well. So it's a really good network of people, the, the statewide network, and keep watching for more on that subject in future vlogs. If you haven't seen last Friday's video and you're just following our vlogs, then have a look at this. It's a yellow-tailed Kribo. It's an adult female. And the highlight of really the year, and definitely last year included, was being offered a breeding pair of yellow-tailed Kribos. These are part of the indigo snake group and a lifelong obsession I have had with them. Something else we did this week was, that was a little bit different is we were contacted by John, who runs The Practical Animal on YouTube, to ask us if we'd be interested in doing a, an interview with him via Zoom call. So, kind of very different from how we do our YouTube channel, but also he's had some great and important people on his channel so far, so it's a privilege to be asked. So, check out the links below, and you can have a look over there on The Practical Animal, and have a listen to all kinds of sort of, I'm not saying I am, but other, other experts or experts in their field about what they get up to all around the country in their work that's animal or falconry related. Check it out. Hmm. Very rude. <laughs> Thanks for watching like and subscribe please help us subscribe